Eastern equine encephalitis is on the rise, and humans are the reason why. Human-induced climate change is providing mosquitoes with the perfect conditions to grow and multiply. By burning fossil fuels, we put greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that trap heat in the troposphere and warm the planet. A warmer planet makes for longer summers and more precipitation, giving mosquitoes the perfect location and temperature to reproduce. Eastern equine encephalitis, or the triple E virus, was first isolated from infected horse brains in 1933. In 1938, the first confirmed human cases were identified when 30 children died of encephalitis in the northeastern United States. These cases coincided with outbreaks in horses in the same regions. The Triple E virus has a complex transfer cycle involving birds and a specific type of mosquito, which lives in marshes and swamps. This particular mosquito feeds only on birds, mainly waterfowl. Sometimes, though, the virus can escape from its marsh habitat by means of other mosquitoes that feed on both birds and mammals. These mosquitoes can then transfer the virus to horses and people. Eastern equine encephalitis is found in North America, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. In the United States, most cases have been reported from the eastern seaboard states, the Gulf Coast, and some inland Midwestern states. The incubation period, or the time from infected mosquito bite to the onset of illness for eastern equine encephalitis disease, ranges from 4 to 10 days. Eastern equine encephalitis infection can result in one of the two types of illness, systemic or encephalitic, involving swelling of the brain. The types of illnesses will depend on the age of the person and other host factors. It is possible that some people who become infected with eastern equine encephalitis virus may be asymptomatic. Most people bitten by an infected mosquito will not develop any symptoms. Severe cases of eastern equine encephalitis begin with a sudden onset of headaches, high fever, chills, and vomiting. The illness may then progress into disorientation, seizures, encephalitis, or inflammation of the brain, and coma. Approximately 33% of patients who develop eastern equine encephalitis die, and many of those who survive are left with mild to severe brain damage. There is no specific treatment for eastern equine encephalitis. Antibiotics are not effective against viruses, and no effective antiviral drugs have yet been discovered. Care of patients is centered around treatment of symptoms and complications. Mosquitoes can come from anywhere with stagnating water. Buckets, puddles, ponds, or anything else that can hold water are open invitations for mosquitoes to lay their eggs. The longer summers speed up their life cycle and allow for an extended breeding season. The elevated presence and reproductive rate of mosquitoes makes infectious disease more prevalent. How can eastern equine encephalitis be prevented? A vaccine is available for horses, but not for humans. Some tips to avoid being bitten by the mosquitoes that cause eastern equine encephalitis are... If possible, stay inside between dusk and dark when mosquitoes are most active. When outside between dusk and dark, wear long pants and long sleeve shirts. And use an insect repellent with DEET according to manufacturer's directions when outside. Awareness is the best way to fight this disease. Make sure you teach your friends and family about the dangers of infectious disease and how to protect themselves against it. Find out the status of the disease in your area to see if you should be concerned. For more information on the disease, contact the Center for Disease Control and Prevention or visit their website at www.cdc.gov. The mortality rate for horses infected with triple E is 70 to 90 percent. People cannot catch eastern equine encephalitis directly from their horses. One of every 50 mosquitoes in Minnesota is capable of transmitting eastern equine encephalitis. Only a few human cases of eastern equine encephalitis are reported annually, and children are the most vulnerable.